Hey, if you don't know us yet, we are two chicks chat. A video that I watched from Sad Guru, who talked about dedication really being devotion, mm -hmm. and how the only places that I had seen devotion really were in religious practice, yep. the places that I'd seen it, and um, just how how uh, you know committed one has to be. Um, to whatever dogma their religion brings forward when you're talking about, you know, dedication or devotion, uh, because often there's not a lot of, um, I don't know how to qualify it, but, you know, the structure is within the thing you believe in. It's not like out in the atmosphere. It's not like the law of gravity. And yeah. you can you know, there's, there's some qualified detail to it. It really is just believing in the dogma of the thing that you decided on and yes. how that being devoted to something, you know, my impression after looking up devotion and looking at videos of devotion and you know what that means is how we're not talking about it very much in you know, in our friend groups and in our families and in society as a whole. Um, because I, I think, you know, from looking at things like the political environment, nobody, nobody can say they're devoted to anything because they need the, the nimbleness to decide to change their affiliation at any given point in the political environment. Yeah. Which to well, me means you don't really believe in anything. You just want the job. I want that gig. And I gotta I'll believe whatever I need to believe in order to make that happen. Yeah. Well, and devotion can be to a person, a religion, a thing, uh, you know, concept, a program. I mean, it could be dedication and devotion can be in any aspect of life to, for me. And I think that yeah, you know. In particular, for a religion that, in my mind, this is my own personal belief, that um, it's all man-made. You know, religion is man-made. And whether you're a seeker or not to figure out what you believe instead of what you grew up with or what your family believes or what's been the, you know, normal, um, you know, way of, of life for for your extended family, uh, even it's, it's really about, um, to me, dedication to myself and not necessarily the, the exact path for me to get to spirituality. But, um, you know, in my seeking, I've looked at every religion that there is and tried to figure out what I wanted for myself. I stopped I stopped doing the devotion of just blindly being a part of the Catholic church, just blindly believing in their rituals and dogmas and the things that they require you to do throughout the year. And I started yeah. looking, uh, you know, what do I believe regardless of everybody around me? What do I believe? And that's a devotion to myself as a person to try to say, I don't, I don't, I want to be so authentic that I want to know what it is I believe without anyone leading me anywhere. Like, yeah, I, I want to come to that on my own. And in that journey, it's sent me out and down all kinds of paths, but it definitely has helped me. Uh, what's the word? Help me to understand myself more. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I, I think that's huge. I, you know, I used to think when I was younger or as I got older, I thought often that I was dedicated to something that I truly was not dedicated. Like I really wasn't dedicated mm. to it. just the concept that the word you use, the thing that you, mm -hmm. you know, say, whatever the case may be. It wasn't until I was raising Lily that I kind of realized what it meant to be dedicated to something 
Mm. You know, and not just someone, but to something. Because the thing I was dedicated to was pairing, p- providing her the best parenting experience I could provide her. Right. Which meant I had to go look, you know, and find examples of good parenting and read books and sit in on, you know, classes and talk to therapists and whatever I needed to do to, you know, to get to that point where I felt like I did the thing, I did the thing I set out to do. Yeah. That I actually went out of my way to find the examples of parenting that made me a really good parent for my child. Mm -hmm. And because that example was not how I was parenting. (laughs) Right. So, you know, you had to go out and find it, but that's the first, that's really the first experience, honestly, in my adult life that I can say I truly was dedicated to that thing. Right. And, and that's a dedication you made, you know, like it wasn't a committee decision. You, I think dedication is individual. And I think what I really want to explore is, you know, if you're dedicated and you're being authentic to that, you know, what, what does it take for you to change that dedication? You know, so if you are dedicated to religion or a child or a marriage or whatever it is, um, a certain art form, even it doesn't have to be uh, the relationship per se, but um, if you're dedicated, then what, what factors bring us to not going forward with that dedication? And I think people are more um, easily swayed and easily give up nowadays. People don't, I know I sound like an old person right now, but <laughs> Um, it's, it's really about sticking with something so that you truly know that it's not like, if you've tried to make it work and try different paths and, and gone through some time of dedicating yourself to that person, place, or thing. And then over time you start to question whether it's working, you know, or you're happy. Um, yeah. And, but but people then, are, are you really dedicated to the person or your happiness or your growth? Mm. Or, you know what I mean? Because there's a question. <laughs> <laughs> because what if they don't, co- they don't meet, you know, then what sometimes do do? they don't meet and, and yeah. at times they, they grow apart. It is what it is. But then I think if you're separating yourself from an individual, then you have to agree that your dedication is to self-happiness and self-growth and self, you know, whatever. That's right. And I think that should be the standard that we all try and live by because then you're going to choose people. Yeah that are going to promote those things. And if, if that have, if it happens to break at that point, it's breaking for a big reason. It's not breaking because, you know, you went and bought a motorcycle and I told you not to. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. It, it, th- those common things can't possibly break it apart. It's breaking because who you are in yourself yeah. has changed. Uh, Tom Bilyeu, I was listening to uh, his podcast last night, this morning, about 4 a.m. Um, but one of the things that he talked about was that he dedicated himself to being a lifetime learner. Mm. So, and I, I, I sat with that for a little bit and I was like, you know, really, if you dedicated yourself to being a lifetime learner, then almost any situation could shift for you Mm. as you learn new things. Mm. So if you're committed to knowledge as Mm. a basis for how you live your life, then as you learn new things in life, 
yeah, you could find out that, yeah, this relationship really isn't the relationship that I should be in. Whether that's your relationship with your religion, with your parents, with your spouse, with your friends, with whatever. Yeah. That may have to shift for you based on something you've learned that you now want to apply to your life. Yes. And that happened to me, as we both know. I shifted in my thinking and who I was and what I wanted to authentically portray as a person. And I was really being mindful of, you know, what is it that I want in my life and who is bringing me drama and who is, you know, getting reciprocally to me, you know, where I'm giving and they're, they're being reciprocal. And, um, I cleaned house and got rid of people all over the place, different friend groups, different, you know, um, business associations, stuff like that. And even how I, uh, communicate with my family changed. And yeah, it really was like a paradigm shift for me and it shifted my whole life and opened me up in a way that I didn't realize I needed to be opened. Yeah. You know, up to that point, I just was like, oh, everything's great, you know? And, and then when I had some of those realizations, like what you're saying, it shifts everything and you start yeah. to eat differently. You start to act differently. You start to, you know, dedicate your time to things that are important to you and not just spreading yourself in a million, you know, the situations and the people and around you start to shift also, you know, yes. what you use the, the big words for what's important, yeah. what's great, yeah. you know, what's wonderful that all of a sudden the things that you used to say were fantastic are just like, eh. yes, but that's because you're growing as a person. And if you not, if you're just going with the status quo, you're eventually going to be unhappy at some point because you're not, you're standing still and it's stagnant. If you're not growing in some way, I feel like you're not living that zest for life. If you're not trying to learn, you know, gain more experiences or like Bill say, you know, trying to be a lifetime learner, whatever aspect of life that is, you know, you could go on and on and on. But um, interesting thing I came across recently that I think applies to this is you in a relationship, if you have two people, you know, going forward in life, right? Yep. They should be side by side, thriving together in their own passions and their own interests and what makes them happy. Yes, they are close, but not dependent on each other right yeah. that's codependence but you're not looking to that other person for your happiness or driving what makes you happy you're doing that for yourself and then if you're both doing that but you're you also have one of those goals out of the many that you have as a thriving individual is mutual goal in a relationship then I think that really, you know, is a um, recipe for growth for both people. I I think that's one of the challenges that people have in relationships and their thought process of relationships is that, you know, and, and, and this is biblical, you know, where a man is supposed to separate from his parents and then join the wife and they become one. And the I, people's idea of that becoming one is you get to decide where we're going and I get to follow you. Instead of we are a unit. Yeah. And we're making an agreement on where we're going. And you may go this way and I may go this way, but we're going here. Mm. Our goal is to get there, you know, together, not simultaneously. Yeah. And I really think, and especially in romantic relationships, it, 
you know, we haven't been taught or shown a good example, none of us have, um, of what a truly thriving, um, you know, uh, abundant and respectful and independent relationship looks like that's not codependent. And, you know, the, the way I think of it is it's a person that's on the life journey with you that gets to witness what it is that you do from there on after, you know, so um, it's more witnessing instead of what can I get out of this situation? <laughs> it's more about yeah. giving people don't think about, well, how am I going to give to this relationship and make it thrive? Cause that's the responsibility. And yes, the fruit of that will be, you will get things that, you know, you prefer in return, just naturally. If some, you know, if a couple I, loves and cares about each other, but I think that that's that's something you just said something that is the epitome of what a relationship should be is you shouldn't have to look for what's yours. Yeah, it, you know, it should just come to you, mm. and you should be excited to get it. Yep. And, yeah, for sure. Notifications popping up in my face. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, it, it should just come to you. And then you have to decide, is this what I want? Is this enough? Mm. And if you decide it's not enough, then you can have a conversation about what more you need that you're not getting from the person that you chose. And if then if they're not prepared to give it to you, then you chose badly. Yeah, well, there's that, but uh, <laughs> for and sure. that's okay because you can choose again. Well, and it might be that back when you chose, that's was perfect for you. And as you get older and have different needs, as yes. you, you're growing as a person and individual, then you know it, it's the same old uh phrase how do you keep the music playing? You both have to be growing to make that happen, and in some cases that growth might send you apart. But in that situation, if your growth together sends you apart and that's the way it's supposed to be, then wish each other the best in the world and the, the ha all the happiness that they can get and, and move on. And yes. no animosity saying, you know, that was the best thing for me or that was the best thing for him. Exactly. I don't want that situation, but it might be forced upon you because this person says, well, you know, I want to go on, you know, trip around the world and I, you know, want to go to all these different countries and I want to help people build, you know, houses for um, underprivileged or whatever it is, right? It doesn't yeah. have to be a mission strip, but it, it can be, uh, I mean, a million different things. They want to move to the North Pole and, and yeah, and, study. And, and help polar bears. Yes, yeah, study, study ice, whatever or, animal. Yeah, or yeah if environmental kind of thing. Yeah. So, and then you say, mm, that doesn't work for me, you know? So I, I don't know. I, I am so about going with the flow and being fluid and trying not to take things personally. 99% of the time they are not about you, They're you know, even though it, it feels like that person is attacking you, usually it's because something horrible happened to them that day. And you have an opportunity to say, are you all right? you know, so, yeah. um, what's going on with you? Because you don't normally act this way. What, what's happening and yeah, what can I do? How can I help? Yeah. Why are you upset and have that yeah. understanding and listening? But it's interesting when we talk about dedication or devotion, because then I think of that, you know, couples model I just talked about. And then I think, well, is it, lack of dedication if you're dedicated to yourself and <laughs> you end up you know splitting ways because it's just that's not going to work in the you know from from here on out for the well I mean their life path 
if you're not doing it from a state of narcissism and it's just like, I got to get everything I can get kind of mindset. But, yeah. you know, like Tom Bill, you said, it, you know, I'm dedicated to being a life learner. So if I want to, if I want to get, gather, get, grab, hold on to all the information I can get in my lifetime. Yeah. And I'm with somebody who's like, you know, I don't want to do that. I don't want to know that. I don't want to see that. I don't want to have, you know, I don't want to have anything to do with it. Then you have to decide how can I adjust my approach to the thing I'm dedicated to yeah. and maintain this relationship. Yeah. And if there's no way to maintain it, there's no way to maintain it. Yeah. That's when you have to decide when compromise is too much. You know, you're compromising too much. Yeah. When compromise is me giving up me. Yes. To satisfy you. Mm -hmm. I would, if, if it weren't for your desire, I would not change this about myself. Yeah. So, you know, and I'm talking about, you know, big things, not like alcoholism and you know, <laughs> yeah. revolution and stuff like that. Yeah. No. <laughs> that uh, stuff yeah. should change. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> for sure. Anyway. Uh, but but it, yeah. go ahead. I, I think one of the things that I'm conscious of is as a society, just as people, I mean, you and I have this conversation on a regular basis. We have it a lot just because our, when, as our lives ebb and flow and shift and change, we just talk about it. Mm. But I think so many people don't talk yes. about that bigger uh, side of who they, who they are, who they see themselves as, who they want to grow to be Yeah, beyond, I want to be in a relationship. Yes. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you can't go to, to a pet store and say, I want a dog. Yeah. You know, you want a big dog. You want a small dog. You want a medium sized dog. You want a trained dog. You want a puppy. You want an older dog. Yeah. <laughs> there, the, there's a plethora. And if you don't yeah, know and, enough about and, yourself and what you're dedicated to as a, you, as a person, single yes. person, there's well, no way you can still. Still at my age, you know, in my 50s, I'm still learning about myself. I hope that never changes. You know, I'm I'm not where I used to be and not where I could be. I'm I'm, you know, growing at the pace that I I have in my life, but I'm still learning so much about myself right now, especially. Yeah. And um things that are triggered in me which is a sign to then, you know, it, it might be something that you need to talk to someone about or whatever, but initially it's a, a flag for me as to my, you know, how do I investigate this within myself to figure out why is that making me triggered? Because nine times out of 10, it, it, again, it's not about you and you shouldn't initially be offended. I mean, there are definitely things where we should be upset and offended. I get that. But um, the little things that happen in a day where, you know, me and everyone else in the free world, I'm sure when you have a bad moment and you're like, you know, pissing and moaning about whatever somebody said or did, or, you know, what didn't happen or whatever it is. Yes. And um, I, I just, I use those moments to really prove to myself, hey, I have some work to do still because there yes. are, there is something in me that's causing this feeling that I don't like. And why am I feeling that way? And I, I ask myself often, why is this pissing you off? Yep. And most people no. don't even know that that's a trigger. They I know. just are, they are in their ship of right in the sea of wrong, you know, and all they think about is, can you believe that person did that? Uh, you know, and, and yeah. instead of, why, why is that pissing you off? Why, the, why does it mean so much? Well, to and you? also instead of calling all your family and all your friends and bitching and moaning about it on, you know, forever for the rest yes. of the day or rest yes. of the week, making me flip through it on Facebook. Yes. And then why aren't you dealing with that in yourself and in 
with that person or that situation. It's really not to be shared. This is an opportunity for you to say, okay, I, I am upset and now I need to dig in and find out really why. And then when you start to understand your side and you calm down, then you can come up to that person and say, hey, I know we had a conflict. I want to talk about it when you're ready. Um, I have some things to say because I've been doing some thinking about my side of things. And that way they're not coming to it as, oh, God, you know, she wants to fight or, oh, God, she's not going to listen to me. Yes. So, yeah, um, you don't start out with, we need to talk. Yeah. Nobody likes that. (laughs) No. So, uh, yeah. But it, it really is about dedication to yourself. That's really what I'm trying to bring it full circle to, to say is that regardless of that relationship that, could be thriving and could move forward long-term or not, or the religion or, you know, um, a dedication to a job or, you know, a, an animal or an art form, whatever it is, you have to be dedicated to being honest with yourself and, and being uh, present and authentic about it and, work through what it is you really want and need and be able to talk to people about it. You have to learn about yourself in order to move forward on the right path. Otherwise, yes, you're, you're just kind of going willy and nilly. If you don't you're really fish, know you're fish out of water, you're just flailing all over the place. That's right. And you're for something. sure going to hit some potholes that way. Yeah. So just I just, something um, the right way. But I, I, I agree and tell me if I'm right, you know, the mindset has to be that you are first dedicated to your peace and your happiness and yes. your care and, you know, those kinds of things. That's right. Those have to be your primary and then That's everything right. else falls after that. That's because correct. Because if you're dedicated, for instance, to your health, you are not going to go to the grocery store and buy Doritos. You know, yeah. and so there's, there's, if you start with that premise, the way you approach your life, That's right. it's just going to be different. And it's going to invite people that meet that criteria. Absolutely. And I think, you know, it raises a bar for yourself. What yes. You were just saying, so as you're growing, you're saying, okay, I'm not going to let anybody steal my joy. I'm going to, when I do get upset, immediately, you know, try to determine what it is in me that is, needs to be looked at, that's sparking this reaction. And then um, the other thing is, you know, some of that joy is really going to lead you to the right place. And if you're not, you know, going internal to figure out what that is, you're going to be lost. So, and you have to keep moving forward to figure it out as well. So you're, you're being mindful of what's happening. You're trying to move forward. You're dedicated to yourself. And because of that dedication, it affects every decision that you make. And it's in a helpful way. Like I know now, if anybody new brings me drama right away, nope, sorry, they fall off. I've had that happen here. Oh, yeah. So I'm just like, nope, you know, this is a drama free zone. <laughs> so, well, yeah, I worked not, hard at that. So, yeah, I'm not up for it. I'm just not, yeah. I'm just not up for it. Life no. has enough hills and valleys. That's I don't right. need to climb your hill or traverse your valley. Yep. I'm not doing that. So, yep. you go over there and have a screaming fit, do whatever you need to do to manage that. And, Stay over there, please, because I don't need you to come back over here. So I got to tell you again to go over there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I've had to tell people to go over there again. Yeah. And, and it's it's stressful. Yeah. It's stressful. No, but you, you have to do it. You have to protect, you know, what your peace and joy, like you said, 
You have to protect it. Yes. No one else is going to protect it for you. And you have to be the keeper of, of that. Otherwise, um, you know, it is just going to wreak havoc in your life. It's going to wreak havoc. And then if you're pouring into yourself and you're pouring into the right relationships, friendship, family, romantic, whatever it is, um, it could be work or a passion. You know, if you're pouring yourself into uh, other relationships that are th- going to help you to grow and thrive, then you have nothing to worry about. And you are dedicating yourself to the things that make you happy. I've got down to three or no, four very good friends. That's it. That's all I got. But I am so happy with the quality that I know that if I, you know, anything happened to me, I could call those four people and say, I need your help now. Yeah. You You got four people that you're like, I've been abducted by aliens and we're all looking (laughs) up. Like, <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, you're not going to believe what happened. <laughs> it is what it is. But that's, I mean, it's what so many people don't have. Yeah. That is so unfortunate because they have, uh, uh, you know, a plethora of people in their world, but none of them have the kind of value that gives them the freedom to be 100% who they are. Yes. And you have to be able to be who you are. I mean, that's the whole thing of it is you need to have that uh, comfort level. Otherwise, you know, um, you'll be questioning yourself all the time. If people aren't allowing you to be who you are and they want to stick you in a box and and this is how you should have, could have, would have acted or, you know, how you should be. No, thank you. You know, well, all those things are for their comfort, not for your comfort. It's true. I think we both make people very uncomfortable with our conversations on the right radar. on, sister. <laughs> <laughs> but I, um, you know, I, I have to, I call it kind firmness. You know, I'm going to be kind in how I deliver it to you and hopefully spark some kind of curiosity that s- says, tell me more. But if it doesn't, that's not my job. You know, it's it, you know, I just put it out there. And then if somebody wants to say, I'm not working that shift. No, I can't. But, you know, if they want to talk about it, I'm willing. Absolutely. And I send them down to the right books and the right podcasts and the right YouTubes, you know, everything. But if they don't, then they're not ready. And then that's okay. It doesn't mean we're we're better than anyone. Else. We're just in different spots. It's like it, going it, down exactly. this path versus that path. We're down a different path. Doesn't make it right or wrong or better or worse. It just makes it different. And well, you know, yeah, if you just graduated have- from medical school, you are a doctor, but somebody that's got 30 years experience is a different level doctor than yeah. you are. Yes. And um, it, it just, I think if if it's not time for them, they follow their path and they have to go through those experiences in order to get to a place where they can start with the self-love, you know? Yeah. And but, I'm like, you know, I'm I'm doing what I need to do to keep my happy. Mm. You need to do what you need to do to keep your happy. Yeah. And if the only way you can be happy is to ruin my happy, one of us is gonna <laughs> have to die. <laughs> no. Not die. I'd be like, mm, it we... may be an out and out assault because yeah. I'm not doing that. I'm yeah, doing that no, anymore. it it just would have to be a conversation, and you know, and maybe that leads to other conversations where you go your separate ways. Who knows? Or yeah. maybe it could be an opportunity to understand each other better and grow even closer. So it doesn't always, you know, things that come up even when they seem like they're bad, whatever that means, they sometimes are a great opportunity to really understand each other and, and grow together even further. And people yeah, don't realize that either. Uh, somebody's going to have to die if they're ruining my house. That's all there is to it. I'm just done. 
<laughs> I, I am 58 and I am not spending any energy explaining That's my true. happiness to anybody else anymore. Yeah. No, I get what you're saying. I'm just talking about if you're in a romantic relationship, but yeah, yeah. I don't believe in romance anymore. <laughs> <laughs> <For another day. laughs> Another topic. 